Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back. So today I am comparing the Enphase IQ batteries to the Tesla Powerwalls. I want to compare the performance specs of each of the systems. I currently have two IQ batteries installed here, but next week I am having two Powerwalls installed. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so we're in here on the computer. And as you can see, I have both spec sheets pulled up for the Powerwall and for the Enphase IQ battery. So we'll get them lined up so that you can see the comparisons. So over here on the right, you can see the IQ battery, your maximum storage is just 1.2 kilowatts and your maximum output is 270 volt amps and this is per battery so obviously your storage would go up and your output would go up so what I am seeing with two batteries installed it's putting out about 520 watts with both of them running at full. So when the solar goes down with just the normal load on the house without the air conditioner kicking in, it accounts for about half of our usage in the evening with just two batteries. So it's not really covering everything, it's just covering some of it. Over here with the power wall too, you can see that we have 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage with a continuous output of 5,000 watts or 5.8 kilovolt amps or 5,800 volt amps compared to the 270 volt amps over here for the IQ battery. It peaks at 7,000 watts or kilo, 7 kilowatts. So you can see right there the numbers are significantly more for the power wall. So let's bring up the price here. So here's a cost breakdown. Right here you can see the IQ battery, 1.2 kilowatts of storage. You're talking about 2100 per battery because it's about 2000 for the battery and then another $100, it's like $85 for the mounting bracket, which contains the wiring connections. So for a Powerwall 2, 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage, 6700 per battery. Now this is what I was quoted for two Powerwalls total of 27 kilowatt hours of storage. My total installed price will be 18,787. To get to the same storage capacity, 27.6 kilowatt hours with the IQ batteries, I would need 23 of the IQ batteries which would be a total cost of $48,300. So you can see that's nearly three times the cost of the power walls. Also with the power walls, we have the option of doing home backup. Now, depending on what your load is, how many batteries you get with one battery, you wouldn't be able to do the whole home backup but you could do a sub panel and have critical loads. You could do things like uh, put the internet on it. Um, you could put the fr your fridge and, and or freezers or whatever you have that needs to stay cold on there. And, but you're not gonna be able to put things like your air conditioner in there and stuff like that. So you put some lights in there as well. If you put in two or more power walls, most likely you can do your whole home backup now it depends on how much load you have on your house and how much electricity that you're pulling 
Like if you have two air conditioners and stuff like that, you're gonna need more than just two power walls. I only have one air conditioner and minimal loads and we're very conservative when it comes to the amount of electricity that we use. So the two power walls that we're purchasing will cover the entire home. So I can do the whole home backup. So as you can see with the amount of electricity compared to the cost of the power walls and the fact that you can get whole home backup or even part of the home backup, there are significantly more advantages with the Tesla power walls over the IQ batteries. Also with the IQ batteries, you cannot do any sort of backup. If the grid goes down, your house goes down, your, your solar doesn't produce, your batteries won't put, put out any electricity, nothing. Everything shuts off. Whereas with the, power, with the Tesla power walls, you have a gateway that is an automatic transfer switch that disconnects from the grid and allows your house to run separately. So that allows your solar to keep producing when there's a power outage situation. Now, that's, and when it, the power goes out, it, it uh, doesn't produce back into the grid, and that's pr to protect people, the linemen that may be working on the lines. So that's why there has to be a, a transfer switch. And that's why the solar automatically shuts down when it doesn't detect electricity from the grid. So there's another advantage with the power walls. Now, the only advantage to the IQ batteries that I could think of was the fact that you can install these yourself. It was super simple. I mean, this is just as easy, if not easier than wiring up an outlet in your house. If you can do that, you can install these batteries super easy and that but that's the only advantage so it does sound like that in phase will be discontinuing the iq battery in favor of a different system i believe it's called the in charge i got an email on it i did some research or i clicked on it and and, and looked into it a little bit it's called in charge and it's going to be the same thing as like the Tesla Powerwall and the LG Chem, where it provides whole home backup. So there'll be a transfer switch so that it'll disconnect from the grid and keep your house running. It doesn't look like there's any timeline when this is supposed to come out or what it's supposed to cost or any of that plus. It's never a good idea to go with the first generation of anything. You don't want to be the guinea pig to find out that there's major problems and then you wasted all that money and there's going to be better systems down the line. Now, obviously, there's always going to be bigger and better technology coming out, but first generation, I would pass. That's why I'm going with Powerwall 2 because the first Powerwalls were like 7 and 10 kilowatts and now they're 13.5 kilowatts plus the cost has come down. So, and with there being no time, a time frame on it or cost, that it's just better that I, I stick with the Tesla. I paid my deposit for Tesla in October or November of 2018, and the Tesla, the Powerwalls are going to be installed. June 28th of 2019. That's when I'm scheduled for installation. So they will, I will definitely be, as long as they let me record, I will be posting some videos of the installation and uh, show you how that goes. I don't, I haven't really hated the in-phase batteries. They are just a little expensive compared to what you get. But again, they were really easy to install myself, which is one of the, uh, I said, I mentioned earlier, that's one of the downsides to the Tesla system. Even though I am capable of installing it, Tesla won't let me. And that's for warranty pur purposes and stuff like that. So this is my cost breakdown of the installation for the power walls. You can see the cost of the power walls, the gateway and supporting hardware, permitting fees, taxes, 
initial payment. That's my deposit. Now installation is going to cost $2,500. And yes, it would be nice to be able to save that $2,500 by doing it myself. And I would, however, they wouldn't, they would not let me. And unfortunately that goes against everything that my channel stands for. But since they won't let me do it, uh, I kind of don't have a choice if I want them. And I have to have the, I have to have more storage in order to avoid getting demand charges from SRP. And I could spend that $18,000 on nine more in-phase batteries. But again, at the end of the day, with a total of 11 batteries, we're only looking at, what, 13 kilowatts of storage? which I'd still be spending more than the power than the than the power walls because I'd be spending an additional 18,000 to what I've already spent in the two batteries so 4,000 so I'd be at $22,000 so it still would not be an advantage and I'd only be at the capacity of one power wall so I will be selling my IQ batteries in the hope to recoup some of the money that I spent on them and SRP right now has doubled their incentive from $1,800 and bumped it to $3,600. With the total cost of the power walls minus the 30% federal tax credits minus the SRP incentive, hoping to recoup at least $3,000 for the two batteries that I currently have leaves me with a cost of $6,551 for the two power walls. I would say that that is, uh, is pretty decent, considering that gives me whole home backup and 27 kilowatts of storage. So that's why I'm choosing to go with the Tesla power walls versus the in-phase IQ batteries. So I'm editing and getting ready to post this video on the day that the power walls are supposed to be installed. Tesla came out this morning and according to the plans, they were going to be installing 100 amp breakers on all the service panels, which would be a downgrade since I have 200 amp service. I did derate the, the main breaker to 175 amps, but still going from 175 down to 100 amps doesn't make any sense especially since I sent Tesla load calculations of my home. They had me take a whole bunch of pictures of locations where the batteries would be in the garage and on the back side of the house where the main service panel was and send them measurements and stuff like that, but nobody physically came out to the house to actually survey the site to make sure everything was good. So, they're trying, it seems like they're trying to save money and cut costs by doing that. But in my situation, they're losing money and I'm also losing out because now I'm gonna have to wait probably upwards of another two months before they come back out here to install them because they have to resubmit to the city of Phoenix for the permits and then I have to reschedule for installation and then they have to come back out here to install them. So that doesn't make sense to me. They really need to send somebody out just to make sure that everything's good. Also, the location where I wanted the panels isn't gonna work because there is, the gas meter is down low and it sticks out too far. The distance is good because it's more than 36 inches away, but it sticks out too far and apparently City of Phoenix or SRP or something like that considers an obstruction because it's more than six inches away from the front face of the gateway or whatever, the panels that they would be putting up. It doesn't make sense to me because it's not like City of Phoenix or SRP would have to be working on the equipment. So why does it matter to them? I don't know, what do I know? But uh, so it's kind of frustrating that I gotta wait longer in order to have this done. They waste time, they waste money. And if they think that they're gonna charge me, because they have to submit and pay for permits again, not gonna happen, yeah, no. 
I'm not paying for more because they screwed up. So not cool, Tesla. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more I Can Do It Myself videos.